All right, we are continuing Terra's story today, and we're heading off to uh, the worst world in the whole game. It's Disney Town. Oh boy, combat level five. Let's get this over with. Huh? Unversed. <laughs> I'll take you on. Look out! Huh? Bro, you almost ran me over. Thanks a lot, Pete. Hey, thanks for piping up back there. I mean it. The name's Tara. It's nice to meet you, Tara. What are you nuts running out onto the course like that? Yeah, that's against the rules. I'm sure you had your reasons, but I can't say that I approve either. I teleported well, there. Rules don't apply when you're up against the unversed. Rules don't apply? You sound just like Pete. Look, it's Captain Dark. Disguised in shadows, the rogue racer reigns. I am Captain Dark. And you must be the chump who made me miss a new track record. You're the guy who almost ran me over. How's come I don't know you? Somebody bringing in a ringer? Ah, oh, I'm not even a racer. Must be downright temptatious to try and stop a primo racer like me from getting a record, but we all gotta play by the rules, rookie. Now, just a second. You're the no-good cheater who's always breaking the rules. Well, I can't say racing interests me, but I need to defeat the unversed. Tell me what I've got to do. Are you talking about all those carts that look like scary, ugly monsters? Hmm. Hmm. Well, we've only ever seen the monsters on the track. That's it! Tara, you just need to enter the races. And while you're at it, take that Captain Dark down a notch or two. He's always breaking the rules and causing trouble. I have to become a racer? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure I don't have to tell you. I know. I'll play by the rules. Oh. Yay! Terror's gonna be a new racer! Just come talk to me whenever you're ready. I'll get you signed up and everything! Welcome to Disney Town, everybody. It's the mini-game world of the game, and unlike 100 Acre Wood, this one sucks. Although it is better than KH2 Atlantica, but then again, literally everything is. So yeah, premise of this world, Terra ends up in Disney Town, has to become a go-kart racer in order to take down the Unversed for some reason, which is exceptionally stupid because we can leave the racetrack and the Unversed also spawn over here as well. So why do we have to become a racer if we can just take them out here? I don't know, but I don't know about you, but my Bitcoin investment is going to pay off. <laughs> Also, I mentioned that the uh, Cinderella world has really annoying music. It's just bippity boppity boo boo played over and over again every 20 seconds. This, it's playing an obnoxious version of the Mickey Mouse March every 20 seconds. It's up to you which one is more annoying. I personally think this one's more annoying, but to each their own. Double bell, double bell and cherry. That's not what I wanted. Oh boy, I'm level 25. Also. Unless I'm mistaken, I think your level in this game caps at 50, not 99. So if that's the case, we are halfway to level, to max level. Oh wait, I have Mega Flare. What am I doing? <laughs> Mega Flare is the answer to all of life's problems. But Magnet is pretty good as well. All right, maxed out my blizzards. An abounding crystal. I've been waiting for those. All right, let's meld some commands together, shall we? All right, we got the blizzard. We could get Blizzara by melding it with Strike Raid. That could be interesting. I think a better idea, though, is to meld the blizzard with the blizzard to get Blizzara. Oh, so the abounding crystal is very good. Used when melding commands, it attaches abilities which increase the number of prizes or EXP you receive. So that's, that's an, definitely a, a useful crystal, and we finally have access to it. I thought we could get those in Radiant Garden, but 
Apparently not. At least I wasn't having any luck with that. So, this Blizzard is type E. Okay, cool. We're gonna attach the Abounding Crystal to that, and it gives us Blizzara with Lucky Strike equipped. Which means that we can get Synthesis Materials more easily. That's for me. Wow, that is a lot of blizzards. A lot of blizzards. Oh, why didn't I have that Magnaga equipped? It didn't make any sense to me. Oh, I also have the new Shot Lock. But I showed that off at the end of the last video. We just shoot dark stuff at enemies. Look at that, our Lucky Strike is already working. Different Unversed can drop different, uh, crystals. Oh, I gotta- I gotta use my Bitcoin investment. I think there are more enemies down here. Aho! Here we go! Payback Thane! Punishing foes with payback moves. Use paybacks to counterattack after an enemy attack sends you flying. Just press square to recover and strike back. It's like an alternate version of aerial recovery, which I thought we would have by this point. But I guess not. So here we go, Payback Thane. I'll be sure to try that out. So Disney Town, thankfully, is like the qu one of the quickest worlds in the game. You literally... All, so there are three different minigames in Disney Town, and each different character has to play a different minigame. So Terra has to play this Rumble Racing minigame, which is actually the best by far. It's still not great, but it's definitely the best. And as soon as we win one race, then we can just leave the world. But of course, it's not that simple if you want to get all this stuff. And there's a lot of stuff hidden in this world. So let's head over to the main plaza. This is where a lot of this stuff is. So first, big boy chest. Because it contains a map. We're gonna want that. Destroy the popcorn machine to get some money. Why are you still giving me potions and chests when I'm this far into the game? I do not understand. Here we go. It's the Huey, Dewey, and Louie's ice cream shop. Thanks for the ingredients! So all these ingredients that we've collected from those different uh, unversed enemies that drop them, we bring them here and we can use them to make ice cream. No joke. We have not collected enough ingredients to unlock any flavors of ice cream yet. But this is actually an important shop because you know the command styles we have? Uh, ice cream is actually useful. Ice cream is like actual items you can equip in your command deck like potions. And what they do is like each different flavor of ice cream, can you can use it to instantly enter a given command style. And then if you use that type of ice cream while you're in the command style, then it lets you immediately use that finisher. Which is, uh, interesting for sure. It's actually really, really good if you know how to use it properly. Especially because some of the command styles later on are just insanely good. Alright. Ooh! This is a new command, Xantasukan. Assail enemies with a single blindingly fast keyboard strike that has a chance of destroying them on the spot. It's not great. But it's Terra exclusive. We can buy slot edges now. Fire Strike and Confusion Strike. Cool. And Mind Shield, because we made that. And we can buy Magnaga and Stopera. Well, that's interesting. Hey, dude, what's up? How about a game of Fruit Ball? No! No! There are three minigames here. Rumble Racing is one, and Fruit Ball is another. Fruit Ball is the most garbage minigame in the Kingdom Hearts franchise. It is so bad, and unfortunately, I'm gonna have to beat every single Fruit Ball game with all three characters if I want to get everything. Then over here, if we talk to Dewey... Wanna play Ice Cream Beat? No, maybe later. Ice Cream Beat is also really obnoxious, but at least it's easy and short. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here. Head underground? Okay. And this is a whole underground area that uh, is optional, but there's a lot of stuff hidden down here, so we definitely want to go. Ooh, one other thing we need to do preemptively. Uh, we are going to need some Thunder Commands. So I'm going to temporarily equip a bunch of Thunder Surges. We, believe me, we are actually going to need them. Oh boy, it's thunder. Oh, 
Man, mine shield is very bad right now. It gets a lot better, though. Take that. Oh, darn it. It was the secret enemy treasure chest. That's not what I want. Yeah, over here. Another thunder spell. There's this giant machine here that will only get powered up if you use thunder-based commands like Thunder Surge on it. And if you hit it enough times with thunder attacks within a given time frame, you start the inner workings in this machine room. And we're going to need these in order to get up to the top. So thank you, Thunder Surge. You have been very helpful. Come on and sing the song and join the jamboree. Alright, we wait for this thing to go down. There's a lot of treasure chests hidden up here. Mega Potion. Absolute Zero, that's a new shot lock. It's an ice-based one, and it's very similar to Sonic Shadow, where we dash repeatedly at enemies. Very, very useful. But we're gonna level up Dark Volley first, I think. Oh, yeah. We gotta wait for these uh, Mickey Mouse hand platforms to help us out. Uh-oh. No, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, man, the platforming in this is almost as bad as the platforming in KH1. Not quite, but... Platforming was very much an afterthought in this game. Especially with how slow we are. Gather! Ooh, big investment off my Bitcoin. I love that. Here we get an action recipe and a chaos crystal. I think the action recipe helps us to, again, when melding commands, it kind of gives us an inkling of what they will end up being. Okay, we got to get that puzzle piece as well. Or this, I'm sorry. Puzzle pieces were those crowns in Kingdom Hearts 2. These are the stickers. And we don't have a whole lot of them yet, so... A Pete sticker! Yay! Who doesn't want a Pete sticker? Oh yeah, and Pete's pretending to be like this Dark Racer superhero in this. Which is very weird. Just the whole premise of this world is very bizarre. Alright, we take the hand platforms up this way now. Panacea, and this takes us to a new room. It's literally, I think this room is literally called Pete's Pinball Machine, which is very interesting. You're gonna see why when we turn the corner. Oh no! Bitcoin sales dropped! Oh boy, our magnet leveled up. Oh boy, a lot of stuff leveled up, actually. Alright, feast your eyes on the pinball machine, folks. We're gonna have to go through this pinball machine, because there's actually treasure chests in here. And we actually have different, like, different controls while we're in the pinball machine. It's kind of like a side-scroller, and we get knocked around a whole bunch. Zero Gravera! Just in a chest? Well, that's just hunky-dory. So that's the way that leads out of the pinball machine, but there's still more stuff to find inside. Specifically, all of these blue bumpers, we need to actually hit all of them in order to get something good. If you see in the middle there, there's a chest behind all those lasers. I think there are four blue bumpers around here, and we need to hit all of them in order to open up the lasers. The 
pinball machine is kind of annoying to go through. Especially as Terra, whose aerial movement is the worst out of all of the characters. Come on. There's another blue bumper up at here at the top. There we go. <laughs> Captain Justice. That's not who Pete is. There we go. And in here we get the break time command, which is one of the rarest commands in the whole game. The only, this is like the only copy in the game. The only other way you can get it, you can meld it. But it's really, 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 really difficult to meld. More on that later. Actually, I guess I can get into it now. So, up to this point, I've been saying things like, if you mix these two commands together, you get this Numa command. There are instances, however, where there are certain commands where if you meld them together, there's only a chance it'll make one thing, and there's a chance it'll make something else. And sometimes there's only like a 5 or 10% chance that a com melding combination will result in something, and break time is one of those commands where the only way to get an infinite out of them is to bank on a very small chance that two commands will make it. It's very obnoxious. Slot Edge. Okay, this is where we're maybe going to sequence break a little bit. So, at this point, I want as many dashing abilities equipped as possible. So, Fire Dash and Thunder Surges. Because what we're going to do is we're going to try to go all the way across there to where that, you see that crown is. So we gotta wait for our commands to charge up, and then we get a running start, jump, air dash, and then start using our commands. Nope, not enough. Thunder Surge doesn't take us far enough. We're gonna need more fire dash, or we're gonna need sliding dash instead. Disney Town also has, like, very strange battle music. It doesn't really fit the Disney Town feel. And the annoying thing is if you uh, mess up and don't go all the way across, then uh, you need to go all the way through the pinball machine again. Uh, again. I guess in the meantime, I can show off break time. Here we go, break time. Use this to take a breather. You deserve it. It is a very bad command, but it's one of a kind. So, there's also an achievement in the game to use break time as each of the different characters. They all do different things. And I think at this point we have all the chests in the world. Yeah, break time. Dang, Terra is strong. Okay, that was disappointing. Let's try that again. I'm not sure if this actually if this actually does anything. It might increase like raise your focus gauge. Or maybe it heals you over time? Regardless, it's a really bad command. But make sure you use it at least once when you uh get it. Alright. Uh, we're gonna buy Fire Dash instead of Sliding Dash, because we can use that to meld more stuff together. I want to level up the Fire Dashes, because the higher level the Fire Dash is, the faster and farther you go when you use it. So I want to make sure they're all max level. There we go, I think Mega Flare is max level now. So slot Edge can reach DS, and so did Mega Flare. Excellent. That means we can start leveling up other stuff. Oh, wait. When did we get a second slot edge? I don't remember getting a second slot edge. There we go. And we get the traffic cone sticker. Was it worth it? Mm. Probably not. That should, I think, give us all the chests in the world. And once I missed another one in the pinball machine somewhere. No, I missed, some I missed one in the pinball machine somewhere. Okay, I got both of them in Disney Town, which is good, because I am missing them in, like, all the other worlds. Alright, Pete's racing. Hey, we get a Pulsing Crystal. Nice. 
Where's the traffic cone? Oh, two traffic cones. Thirty-five points. I am on point. Here we go. Secret chest up here. Aerial slam! Oh, that's actually a really good command. That's a really good command, actually. Uh, let's start leveling that up instead of this fire dash. What do you say? But yeah, aerial slam. Press triangle at the right time to knock enemies into the air and then smack them right back down. It's a very fun command. And it's quite powerful, too. So we will definitely be taking advantage of that. And my mistake. I said this was Pete's pinball room. It's technically called Pete's rec room. for aerial slam, but I want to use it. Boom! <laughs> so cinematic. I love it. I just realized that Arrow was in the shop, and I haven't really ever bought them yet, so... I'm gonna buy four of them. Just because I can. Uh, do I have any Fyragas? I don't. I have, like, no fires. I'm actually gonna buy a Fyraga. I have plans for it. And let's see, can I buy Blackout as well? I can for 600. I would like one of those, please. All right. At this point, I think we can actually start playing the mini games in question, which is all we actually really need to do. We can talk to Chip and Dale. Why they're in charge of the race, I don't know. Ready to try some rumble racing? Bring it on! Rumble racing. Battle your rivals in a race for first place. Accelerate with X. Brake with uh, square. Make sharper turns by changing directions while you brake, then hitting the gas again. Use the ramps and dash rings to jump and find shortcuts. If you see this marker and have a rival in your sights, press circle to strike. Remember to block attacks with triangle. So this is basically Kingdom Hearts' answer to a racing game. It's not great, but it's not terrible. The main problem with it is... Um, it's not super fun, and there is massive amounts of rubber band AI. Also, those tornadoes have massive hitboxes at the end. So we're racing against, like, a couple of unversed. Pete, who is saying he's Captain Dark, and then I think Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Be the first to cross the finish line. So this is normal turning, and then that's brake turning. So we're gonna boost over here. But you'll see, like, if, since we're in first place, the enemies are gonna speed up big time. Also, they're really annoying. Especially since they can attack you as well. Is there a way to look backwards? Okay, there is. If you, hold, if you hold L1, you can look backwards, which will be very nice when it comes to figuring out when you need to deploy your shield. Make sure you watch out for the tornadoes at the end, otherwise they will attack you. Yeah, but like, look at that. They literally will just be like, oh, you're in first? Alright, we get to speed up. There's also five laps. This is what happens if you don't take the shortcut. As you can see, it's quite a bit longer. Although we do get a boost over here, which is nice. Still longer, though. Take that. <laughs> once you get- the controls are kind of weird, but once you get them down, it's not too bad. Honestly, this would be pretty fun if it weren't for the rubber band AI. Like, you can see I have a massive lead, but then, as you can see, Pete is catching up to us. And he's literally just faster than us. Like, there's a chance even though we take the shortcut, he could still beat us. Especially if the tornadoes hit us. Okay, never mind. The, the rubber banding generally stops on the final lap, which is nice. But not always. There we go. Easy win. I like how Terra's just riding his uh, keyboard bike. He's like, why do I have to do this? This isn't really important to my story, but... Okay. 
All right, Terra wins first, then Louie, then two Glide Wieners, then Dewey. Oh, Captain Dark won last. Serves you right. Unlocked Rumble Racing in the Mirage Arena. Yeah, you'll remember Rumble Racing was an option. You gotta play it in Disney Town before you get it in the Mirage Arena. And we get a high potion for winning first place in that circuit. Oh, my cart must have sprung a spring. You yahoos just wait. Next time, I'll clobber all of you. Pete? Vote? What are you talking about? Chip means the Million Dreams Award. It's a very popular part of our dream festival. Everyone in town votes for who we think is the most exemplary citizen. And since everybody knows how much of a troublemaker Pete is, he probably figured wearing a disguise was the only way he'd get any votes. No votes, no prize. Yeah, the prize is all he really wants anyway. He doesn't care about being a good citizen. Oh, I think that's very sad. The award is supposed to help us appreciate how much we all look out for each other every day. Well, one thing I know for sure, I'm voting for Terra. I'm not even a citizen here. Your racing really saved the day against those monster carts. Hip hip hooray for Terra! The, the, the unversed cart racers were the least troublesome on the racetrack. Well, I got something out of it too. I learned that you don't always have to bend the rules to reach your goals. I didn't know that I could do that before, but I'm sure glad I learned it now. <laughs> All this time, I've been staring into the darkness. But, that doesn't mean I have to jump in. That is a very poor attempt at shoehorning this into the overall story. Especially since Terra does not listen to this at all. <laughs> And yeah, that's Disney Town. We don't even we don't even get a new Keyblade at the end of it. That's how bad the world is. There is a Keyblade for this world, but we have to play a bunch of Rumble Racing to get it. We unlocked the command board for Disney Town, because of course we did. The Dream Festival has a wealth of wonderful attractions, including some you may not have tried yet. Come back and visit soon. I don't wanna, but... Alright, let's try out this game. Wanna play Ice Cream Beat? Alright. What song do you want to try? Alright, our first two songs we got It's a Small World and Blast Away, Gummy Ship 2. Let's do It's a Small World, I guess. Pick a level, we only have beginner. Here we go. This game sucks. But it's not as bad as Fruit Ball. Ice Cream Beat. Keep the rhythm as you stack up ice cream. First, listen carefully and remember the rhythm of who claps when. Next, it's your turn. Aim with the D-pad and press X to launch ice cream to in the same rhythm that you learned. Press X just as the green ring closes around the button. If you see the word press, keep hitting X for a combo. It's literally just a... It, this is Kingdom Hearts' answer to a rhythm-based game. It's kind of like Kingdom Hearts 2 Atlanta, except the songs aren't as soul-taintingly awful. Still not very fun, though. But at least it's fast and pretty easy. Here we go! So we see Dewey is clapping a lot. Gotta shoot ice cream at him. Also, the timing is not exactly right on this. You gotta press X before the rain actually closes around the circle. Like I said, it's not very great, but it is... It could be worse. As you can see, that was the end of the song. Hooray! We got a score of 1,700! Wow! How the heck is Huey balancing all of that ice cream on top of it? But, oh well. Get a score bonus, a height bonus, and total. You can get a couple different rankings. Fantastic is the best ranking you can get. <laughs> whack a -rooney. We unlocked Master Mode for It's a Small World. Oh, yay. I can't wait to see what that's all about. You, you look way too excited here. 
Dewey. Way too excited. All right, let's put Small World Master level difficulty. You actually do get surprises if you can clear the levels on Fanta on Master difficulty with a fantastic ranking. So we're at least gonna do some of them. I hate how the timing is off on the controller. Keep having to move the D-pad around, which can be a little annoying, but the most annoying part of this by far is the fact that there's a bit of a delay on the buttons. Well, I never screwed up, so I think that should be a fantastic ranking. Like I said, it's not super hard. Cool. And for that, we get an elixir. Okay, well, that's not really worth it. <laughs> Wanna play ice cream? <laughs> Fine, I'll do it. Play Blast Away Gummy Ship 2, beginner level. There actually is a prize I want to get here. Here we go. It's Kingdom Hearts music. We unlocked Master Mode for Blast Wii Gummy Ship 2, and we unlocked the song Dessert Paradise and the song Destiny Islands. Dessert Paradise is the one that I wanted to unlock, because that has the reward I'm looking for. Yes, I'll play. Dessert Paradise, I think, is the only original song made for Ice Cream Beat. Yeah, please just get please keep giving me the whistle parts. Those are great. Twenty thirty. <laughs> That's almost the the year we're in. We get Master Mode for Dessert Paradise. That's the one we want. If we clear Master Mode for Dessert Paradise, we actually get a very special reward. With a fantastic ranking, that is. Oh man, the timing is off for this. Oh, 
Oh no, we lost ice cream. How the heck are we supposed to do that part? Alright, we messed up once or twice. But I think that's still a fantastic ranking. It's pretty lenient on this, so there we go. We unlocked the Frozen Fortune command style, which is the most unique command style by far. I mentioned earlier that you can brew ice cream here, and that the ice cream can turn you into specific command styles. Well, the Frozen Fortune command style you can only use by eating ice cream. And not only that, but it's totally random. Basically, if you eat any ice cream, even if it's supposed to bring you into a totally different command style, there's a small chance you'll enter the Frozen Fortune command style instead. It's really weird. I will try to show it off, but seeing as how we don't even have the Frozen Fortune command style unlocked yet. Or seeing as how we don't even have any ice cream yet. I'm not so sure about that. Anyhow, I'm going to go back and do more rumble racing because I really don't want to play Fruit Ball. I'll play Rumble Racing. So we did the Country Chase earlier, so now we're going to try the Disney Drive. And now, Pete should not be racing us. It should be a couple of unearths, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Huey, Dewey, and Louie are really obnoxious, too. I think Louie in particular is always like, Later, alligator! Whenever he passes you. So instead of moving out this way, we instead go into the town. That tornado is evil. Very hard to dodge that one. We can do a really tight turn here to enter the sewers. I was brake drifting the whole time. You usually want to brake drift around here. Ooh, this is nice. This is basically an invincibility. But unlike Mario Kart Invincibility, it doesn't make us go faster. But it does let us go past the tornadoes, no problem. Still five laps. What are you even saying, Huey? You need to enunciate better. If you take the long way through here... You do get a special shield, which will allow you to move through the tornado without having to get out of the way, which is very nice. Again, couldn't tell what you were saying, Louie. Or Huey. And I think Huey literally just turned and hit a wall. I do mind you, actually. Rumble racing is pretty easy once you get the hang of it. Until you get to the last course. Last course is brutal. Like I said, like rumble racing is actually kind of fun. Ice Cream Beat is pretty lame, and then Fruit Ball is... hell. Even if you know the secret to Fruit Ball, it's still super annoying to play. The Unversed are the least annoying part of Rumble Racing. They don't say anything, and they barely do anything. It's always Huey, Dewey, and Louie who are super obnoxious.
Oh. I keep trying to hit the uh, the boost panel there. Look on the map at the two arrows behind me. You see how much faster they're going than I am? That is purely because of Rubber Band AI. It's always interesting. Look at the map, look at the arrows, and watch how much faster they go than I do. Even when they're not hitting boost panels or anything. There we go, that's what I've been trying to do. Oh yeah, look at how fast I am. This is, oh, okay, this is the final lap. So they are going, yeah, you can see, final lap, Rubber Band AI just gets disabled, which is great. That's how much faster I'd be going with than them normally. Yeah! And we get the Grand Spree course, and we get Fire Dash. Good, because I needed another Fire Dash. Wait, no, I do want to play more Rumble Racing. Let's go to Grand Spree! This time we're going backwards on the track. Oh great, Louie's in this battle. Yeah, so here we're going into town backwards. And hey, wait, Pete is racing this time. I thought Pete only raced in the story mode uh, part of this. Louie's the one who keeps screaming, LATER ALLIGATOR! Wait, what hit me? I'm not... Well, that never really happens. I did not know Pete could do that, but apparently I can barely see now. I was gonna say, this better not be permanent! <laughs> okay. You're not even passing anybody, Louie. Well, first placer has a breakaway. Give me that shield. Someone's locking onto me? That's a big mistake. Look, it's freaking Louie. Curse you, Dewey. Get back here. Good luck getting through this course if you don't grab the shield. That tornado placement's kind of evil. You can't really tell where it's gonna be before it's too late to get out of the way. I also don't think this these should be five laps. You could have stopped it free.
How dare you try to pass Terra, the rightful winner. Does this mean it's in the rules that you can beat up other racers on the track? That doesn't seem like a very Minnie Mouse thing to do. Oh no you don't. Alright, we should hopefully get a breakaway lead now. I think I was touching the tornado, no, but all right. Finish! We win first. Louie won last. Yay, and then we get the Castle Circuit race course, and we get Aurora, which is the upgrade to Arrow. All right, here we go. This is the last course, the Castle Circuit, and it's totally different from all the other courses. Instead of going through Disney Town, we are now racing through Disney Castle. And this course is kind of crazy. There are so many different ways to go. Don't fall off. If you fall off, you've basically already lost because it's so, so much longer. Alright, here we go. So we've got to do a sharp turn out here. We'll do a sharp turn this way. Okay, we missed the fast road in. So now we go, gotta go around here the long way. And into the gummy hainer. And as you can see, we are already in last place because we didn't take the fastest way. Bring it. Those things will push us in different ways. What we want to do is hang out on this area. We do not want to fall off at all. So as you can see, look on the map. See those guys who are heading off to the top left of the map? They fell off. And they're taking a very long detour. Whereas everybody else took a faster route, and as you can see, they are just way far ahead. This course in particular should only have been three laps. Alright, let's try this again. Here we go. This is the fastest way in. If you can hit that ramp. See how much faster we got in here? Okay. Making us go on this side again. If you can do a tight turn to the left, you can take a slightly faster way in, but it's really risky. And if you fall off again, it's basically an automatic forfeit. I hate having someone right behind me on this section because they are going to catch up to you due to the rubber band AI. Alright. Alright. So what, you gotta do like a sharp break turn to get to the left and then you wanna do just a generic simple turn to go onto the ramp. Alright. Yes, I am a chicken. I don't want to do the really tight turn onto a plank that I could fall off of. Look at how far back the last placers are. It's because they fell off one time. Yeah, like, look at that. He's going way faster than any vehicle should be able to.
We are never gonna go down the right path, are we? There we go. Now all of the AI is far behind. Oh wait, I spoke too soon. Second placer just got a massive burst of rubber band AI speed, and now they're right behind me. Nope, right ahead of me. Oh my gosh, we're finally going to go on to the right. It doesn't really make a difference. At least if you want to go on that path. But if you want to go the fastest way, you have to. <laughs> you have to go on the left. Oh, how wow. Isn't it amazing that the second placer just doesn't move nearly as fast on the final lap when Rubber Band AI is turned off? It's just amazing. There we go, first place. And here we get the Victory Line Keyblade, a Keyblade of above average reach that makes it easier to land critical hits. And for all of the work that's needed to get that Keyblade, it's not even that good. But it does give us extra reach and strength, so it is better than the Treasure Trove Keyblade. Oh yeah, we got the action recipe. Recipe list that reveals that you will create uh, what you will create if your melding combination will result in an action command. Not great, but not terrible. This Keyblade looks kind of doofy, but it does have long reach and is kind of powerful, so I like it. If you're playing casually, it is probably not worth grabbing to go out of your way for. How about a game of football? All right. Who do you want to play against? Versus the Bruisers, they're the only option. Welcome to the worst minigame in all of Kingdom Hearts. Fruit Ball. Hit the fruit balls into your opponent's goal to score. Each fruit reacts differently when hit. You can press X to shoot, uh, square for a curve shot, use triangle to bump the fruit into the air, then you can press X for a fast goal shot, or press triangle to smash the fruit at the opponents. Use the left stick to control the fruit's direction while shooting. It's an interesting idea, but man, it doesn't work well at all. So we gotta get stuff into their goal. And basically the strategy for this game is just spam the lob shots. I hate the grapes because the grapes when you hit them will split into tiny balls. Which like, while they can work well for you, they generally work better for the opponents. These yellow balls will split into bananas if you choose to slam them on the ground. I'm just spamming the triangle to knock it in the air and X to launch it into the goal. The enemies basically can't do anything about it. As you can see, we've got 11 goals, they've got zero. If you are having trouble doing fruit ball, this is the strategy. If we press triangle, it'll lob it to the ground, and it, as you can see, the bananas split into banana peels, which means that it will cause them to slip if they land on one. As you can see, one of those bruisers is knocked out. Give me the pineapple. Oh, the watermelon. Alright. Yeah, I hate fruit ball. Like, I'm pretty good at fruit ball, but I don't like it. The real question is, which is worse, Fruit Ball or Blitz Ball? I have not played Final Fantasy X, so I can't answer that, but Fruit Ball's pretty bad. Oh look, we just got a random goalpost in the middle now. It's not actually a goalpost, it's a fence to stop us from doing anything cheeky. No, they scored against me. Oh, 
Generally, the bananas I like slamming into the ground just to incapacitate them. Whereas the other balls, I, or the other pieces of fruit, I like to launch into the goal. This is literally a one-on-two, and I'm destroying them. Maybe part of the reason I hate Fruit Ball so much is because on my first playthrough, I had no idea how to play it. And in one of the stories, you have to beat Fruit Ball in order to progress. And we win! 34 to 3. What did you expect? <laughs> What did you expect? Now we can take on Chip and Dale, and we get a balloon letter. Oh, yay. How about a game of fruit ball? Let's do Chip and Dale next! Despite them being much smaller, they are a lot harder to beat. But still not too bad. But man, are they annoying. They'll spout the same voice lines over and over again. Get ready to he get ready to hear them saying "chipper" over and over again. <laughs> they are so tiny! Wow. As you can see, they're doing a better job at uh, stopping me from scoring a bunch than the Bruisers were. Still not doing a great job, though. Did they just say, ready or not, here come the x knots I don't think so. There we go. And yeah, just kind of rinse and repeat. Fruit ball is so exciting. Don't get me wrong, some of the 100 Acre Wood games are uh, pretty annoying too, but the thing that makes Fruit Ball obnoxious is that Fruit Ball is not optional, at least in one of the stories. It is in Terra's story, but in one of the stories it is not, and it's also long. It's like four minutes per game. Are they saying the apex shot? Who says that? So this is the most wasteful sport of all time. Think of all the fruit that's going to waste as a result of playing this dumb sport. Also, some fruit, if you get hit by, it'll just stun Terra. Or whoever you're playing as. Like, if a watermelon falls on your head, you're probably going to be out of the action for a while. Or are they saying the acorn shot? I don't even know. Also, why do Chip and Dale sound like this? Like, Chip kind of sounds like them, but Dale just like has like a country accent for no reason. This ain't my first time playing football, kids. You're not beating a pro like me. Oh, 27 to 8. This was less decisive of a victory. Now we can take on Captain Dark. The worst one by far. And we get Magnera. Captain Dark stops messing around, and you're probably going to lose to him a whole bunch. He is really obnoxious. We really gotta use. We really gotta shoot the fruit into him, especially the bananas. We re he's really good at blocking our shots. And wow, he stunned us already. Shoot, 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 shoot
should not have aimed it that way. I also feel like when you're facing Captain Dark, it's just easier to get stunned by the fruit. Even fruit that normally would not have stunned you in other games. Also, the goal will move up in this fight for some reason. He also has a nasty tendency to split the grapes up and use those to get a bunch of points. And as you can see, Captain Dark, uh, this ain't his first time playing through Ball Ivor. This is the main problem. If he if he keeps stunning you over and over again, like good luck. Can we get some bananas so I can knock him out? I got knocked out by grapes. Are you serious? As you can see, like, it's- it's a close game. Like, look at this! There's too much stuff. And all it takes is like one shot from him to knock a bunch of stuff in. Alright, we just barely beat him though. Good. And we get Chaos Snake, another shot lock. And it's a very good shot lock. It launches a bunch of like, stuff that damages and confuses the enemies. It's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. And we could do more ice cream beat, but honestly, I'm not doing more of that today. No siree. One thing I will do, however, is I will play the next command board. Because we unlocked a new command board. Yeah. New game. We are going to play on the Toon Board. You'll need to stay on your toes on this wild, unpredictable board from Disney Town. Our opponents are Minnie and Captain Dark. GP goal of 6,000. Let's play. Yay, more bad music. No, we're not going to shuffle the plane over. All right. All right, let's see what the bonus commands are. We have Binding Strike. Okay. Not great. Stopera. It's okay. Zero Gravera, it's alright. Blizzard Edge, Deep Freeze, that's a good one. Blizzaga, and Blizzard. Okay, Deep Freeze is the one that I really would like to get, if at all possible. As for my hand, I have a bunch of magic, alright. A free, I could go over there. Okay, just taking a look, we gotta hit these two checkpoints. And then we gotta hit these two checkpoints. Let's land over here. Put down mine shield. There we go. I'd like to level that up. Here I go. Somebody call for a hero? Not you. Did you 
Pete is a very annoying opponent. Let's roll two dice. Okay. All right. Let's level up an arrow. There we go. Oh no, Minnie's gonna grab the bonus panel. No, she's not. She's going up here. Look at me. Did you see that? <laughs> I could go for a free right now. Eh. Uh. Not right. quite, but six is also good. <laughs> Why do I have so many magic commands when I'm playing as Terra? Let's level up Blizzard. There we go. Minnie doing? She's just walking in circles. Oh, she took my command panel from me. Alright, that just gives me more money, Minnie. Or more GP, I'm sorry. Okay, Pete has rolled a six every single turn. He rolled a six literally every single turn. He is totally cheating. There we go. Did you see that? <laughs> Maybe a bit risky, but we're using our last card to roll two dice. Because I've got a long way to roll before we get to the next checkpoint. Yeah, we're moving down. That's not good. Pete used Confuse on us, so now I won't be able to choose which way I go at the junctures, which means I might end up going completely the wrong way Just and wait. miss those checkpoints. Yep, I'm going the wrong way. And Confuse, I think, lasts for three turns. All right, Z, you're going down. Did you see that? I hate the little dance he does whenever he does anything.
Move down, please. Uh, thank you, Terra. And that is Cure. Yes, let's start leveling that up. There we go. I am no longer confused. Thank goodness. Alright, that was a minor detour. Not too bad. Oh, Minnie got a big detour, though. Pete has gotten very lucky with the rolls. Did you see that? Like he's gotten a one once, and a six is on pretty much every single other roll. Oh, Fantasia gained GP based on something. It went too fast. It might be GP based on the amount of uh, panels you own. It's a pretty good one. I mean, it's no Keyblade Glider, but... Please let me get back to the bank. Thank you. Alright! We're going up. There we go. No. That's fine. I'll pay money to Mini. That's fine. Do I want Wait, I can just get a free Blazaga for four- Yes. All right. Yes. Blazaga's really good. <laughs> well, it's not, like, really good, but it's definitely worth paying, like, a couple hundred fake GP to get instead of, like, 2,000 money. Did you see that? Pete, stop acting so high and mighty. Oh my gosh, he has a lot of GP. Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Ooh. I want to land on the sparkly space. Yes, please. Fantasia! Here we go. All right. Oh! Oh, I'm so close! If Minnie Mouse pays me a bunch of money. Minnie Mouse is paying me a bunch of money! Minnie landing on that is gonna hand me the victory. Thank you, Minnie. And free dice, please. Actually, no. We'll use Joker's Fortune. Maybe we'll okay. get a bonus panel. Nope, double toll. I guess not bad, but... I get to level up one more panel. I will level up Aurora. There we go. Minnie is not having a good game. I was about to say, Minnie, if you just pay him and give him the victory. Right. Winner! <laughs> you get Blazaga level 2! Wonderful. That's just so fantastic. All right, well, there we go. Disney Town, 100% complete, both in terms of treasures and in terms of stickers. We'll have to go back and finish up the ice cream beats. 
as well as creating some ice cream flavors in the future, but we run out of time for this episode. Next time, we're heading off to Olympus Coliseum, because, yeah, we've never been to this world before. Look forward to that next time. We also might be touching up on some of Mirage Arena, so should be a lot of fun. Hope to see you then. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.